All right, welcome. This is the Herb Bar, and I'm so thrilled that y'all are here. My name is Beth Carpenter, and I'm actually a naturopath and medical intuitive here in town. And I've been fortunate to be doing talks here for 15 years or something like that. So I really appreciate you being here. Um, the talk today specifically is on cancer and choices. And this is a path that really defined my path in life because I found myself at 23 being told I had less than six months to live. And I'm 53, just to let you know, so several years have passed. And irregardless of what path you take, and we're gonna talk about the different paths because there's what's considered the allopathic direction, which is known as mainstream medicine, which is really only about 200 years old because medicine prior to that was more of a natural medicine and more of um, naturopathy or homeopathy, even though, yes, other parts of medicine may have gone further, it was still things came from natural sources. So we're going to talk about that because in dealing with a cancer experience, that's considered like one of the most severe diagnoses that you can get from a physician. And with physicians, based on their training, part of their training is to get you into action. They have very strong marketable skills to instill fear because to them this is the top of that chain too of like danger danger warning sign and it is a warning sign in life all right it's saying something's seriously amiss here on the inside and cancer is more than a physical condition because it affects and actually begins within our emotions, within our psyche. And then our cells begin to mutate to match that consciousness. Now you still have a very serious physical situation that needs to be addressed physically and if your body is just like, oh, you have a cancer in an arm, oh, let's just focus on arm, you're not going to get the overall health and results that you desire because the contamination of the mind still exists. It's an interesting phenomena. It really, really is. And so when dealing with health, you want to make sure, and with cancer, you want to make sure that you're also addressing the emotions. And when I say the emotions, sometimes those things are way, way deep. So the first place to start is healing the emotional heart of its wounds. How, how many here today are dealing with the cancer experience? I'm here for, for prevention. Okay, just, prevention. Okay, and how many here has known somebody who's gone through a cancer experience? Yeah. So whether you're a supporter of somebody going through it or experiencing it yourself or like you say in prevention, they're all critical roles and so you'll find that part of it is also what's going on inside your mind whether you're going through the experience or supporting somebody going through a cancer experience because the fear can get out of control if you feed it in our life and I'll take from the time that we begin to drive. 
And when we get a vehicle, we have to 100% take it in for oil changes and maintenance. If we don't, at some point, you're going to burn the engine, period. You're going to run it into the ground. With the human population, and I was no different, is that whole concept of paying attention and doing a regular maintenance on ourselves was not a reality for me until the major red flag shoots up and you're given the diagnosis of the big C. You know, I mean, I had doctors saying, you've got to face reality. This is going to be a horrible, painful death. Get it through your head. I'm like, no. You have to uh, take the fear away from the word cancer and go, oh, I must have missed a major overhaul here. And take it from the approach, even if you're working with doctors, that's totally fine if you want to work with doctors, but don't completely relinquish your power to the physicians. Because they will take those reins and they will run with it, especially if you have good insurance. Okay? And I even had good insurance when I initially went in for doctors, and it was still very expensive. Because as I went through my cancer journey, it winded up being a 10 year experience. And during that time, it did include natural medicine some homeopathics. I primarily worked with herbals and energy medicine along with what's called mainstream medicine, but I worked with the emotional mind. I started to recognize the connections with the emotional mind. I started remembering as a child because of how horrific things were as a child that I had memories of seeing myself in a hospital bed almost dying and going, they finally loved me, not knowing what I was creating. And no matter the chaos that was going on in my home environment, I realized I couldn't blame these people or these things that were happening, that I had to consciously make other choices. Because I was also to follow that route of an early demise, was making lifestyle choices that would accelerate that. I was a party girl, okay? I drank and did drugs, had lots of friends, we had lots of parties. And it was tearing my body apart. You know, I mean, there are some people that their physical constitution, they can still tear their body apart and they live to be 100 years old. That doesn't happen to many people. Most people have to pay a price. And I was paying a very, very severe price for it. Now, the interesting thing is because I had this natural intuitive ability, I began to have dreams while going through this cancer experience saying, this is part of your school. This is part of your education so that you can help other people. Because one of my greatest joys is to help wake up other people to get their body and their minds detoxed. So I had to look at my own toxicity. You know, at one point between everything that I was doing, and we'll talk about that more, it was like I knew that I was, could probably glow in the dark. I was so radioactive between, because I was at one point doing like chemotherapy and radiation. Thank God I'm in a place that I can look upon 
cancer with joy and with elation for what I learned from it. There were times during it, I promise you, there was no laughter. And if I can teach others on how to take it seriously, but without becoming so serious that you forget the joy in life and recognize in everything that you do and choose, there are choices. Even as being a supporter of somebody, you can get so caught up in their pain and their drama that you take that on yourself. And then that makes you less effective as a caregiver. Because in dealing with cancer, you need a massive support system. Massive support system. Reach out to friends, family, churches. And there is a huge wealth of knowledge and resources available to help anyone going through whatever level of a cancer experience and whatever choices they make in it. Because sometimes the choices people make is to transcend, is to leave this planet. And it's okay. So how do you do it to make it easy? No, this isn't about accelerating it, but finding peace in whatever process you're choosing to take and whatever part in which you're helping. If you're saying, I want to make sure I do my regular maintenances so that my body has a lower risk of getting cancer, great, please do it. Please, please do it. And um, I always get some things like from the herb bar that they carry, you know, because there's, with cancer, there can be a gazillion different deficiencies because there's a lot of things in the body that aren't functioning properly but if you work with the emotional heart first to eliminate the emotional aspect while keeping your bloodstream cleansed then you can always add on and do some other things later too that's the cool part and let's say you know somebody who's going through a cancer experience and they're taking the chemo route or the radiation route. They still need to keep their blood detox because that toxicity can build up and cause further complications. The, usually the older a person is, the harder it is for them to undergo chemotherapy. In my cancer experience, I did do chemotherapy in addition to natural medicine. And I can tell you, I only did it because I was being directed by my angels through my dreams that this was part of my training to help other people. And so even though I said, no, 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 let, we're not going that route. Because for five years, I refused chemotherapy and radiation and was doing things naturally and put myself in complete remission. And then an emotional trauma event occurred where somebody very close and important to me in her anger wrote me a seven-page letter and said, you're going to die. You need to know the truth. And this toppled me. I absolutely emotionally collapsed, and within six months, tumors were growing so rapidly within my body that when I went in for a scan of my internal organs, they couldn't even count them all. 
And usually once the tumors are in the internal organs, it's considered that lifespan shrinking even more. Once again, my dreams were guiding me. So I'm grateful that I had that gift of guidance from my angels and ascended beings saying, you're going to get through this. And I did. And that's why I can help people no matter what stage that they're in. One of the reasons I tell my story is so people know that they too can get through whatever situation may arise. There were so many times I could have exited. Really, so many times. There were times that the pain was just so excruciating. You know, and I remember lying in the hospital bed and they had a drip for pain, but they had a button. That's how severe things were. So if the pain got too bad, I can push the button. And I would refuse to push the button because I didn't want to be any more toxic than I already was, which seemed kind of crazy in the moment. You know, and I made the nurses absolutely nuts. And they finally just went, Shh, you're going to sleep, go to sleep. Because I was refusing to sleep because I was accusing them of moving me in the middle of the night to different rooms. Because when you're in so much pain and so toxic, you have hallucinations as well. And... Knowing how to help somebody through that journey is crucial and to let you know that on the other side, you're going to be okay, no matter what. Divine Source, God, Yahweh, whatever you'd like to call that omnipresence is always with us. And the inner is always okay no matter what's going on with the external. I remember after getting out of the hospital, because like I said, I had done like five years of natural. I did four and a half years of chemotherapy, and then I went in for a bone marrow transplant. And then went back to doing natural, all the while incorporating natural in there. And I remember when I got out from the bone marrow transplant, and this is a radical procedure. Very, very radical. And it was one of those days where <clears throat> everything was wrong. You know, I'd had a cold, a flu, I'd gotten hepatitis from the blood transfusions. You know, my body was just so very weak and I was like boohooing. You know, I had to let some tears roll and I called up my Nana and I'm giving my Nana this laundry list of everything that's just happened to me. Oh, yeah, I forgot my husband had left me, too. So I was just like, Nana! And she's like, well, honey, what's wrong? And so I tell her. I tell her everything. And after I'm done, she goes, well, honey, besides that, how are you doing? And all I could do was laugh. To me, that was like a lesson. It was like... Well, I'm doing just fine. That's exactly what I told her. I said, Nana, I am just fine. Because I got to return to the core of who I was and recognize, oh, yeah, all this other stuff's on the outside. And I can make choices in every single moment. Because you can let these things that are going on around you to further contaminate you or not. And that's probably one of the most important things to know when you're going through a challenge, whether it's a health challenge like cancer or something else. You have choices. And you have to clear your mind. And you have to clear your heart. And if you don't do that, you'll continue to be in an emotional suffering. So, believe it or not, one of the very first things that I believe in, in body maintenance, is healing the heart. This is one that um, 
the herb bar carries, and this is a flower essence for healing the heart chakra. Because remember, disease begins in the, in the mind and the emotions of what we feed ourselves. From doubt, from fear, from who hurt us, and holding on to that hurt. And I'll have people do a flower essence for their heart. There's a lot of different ones out there. And, uh, but this is one that they carry here. And I'll also have them use hawthorn. Hawthorn is an herb specifically for the heart. It is known as a regulator of the heart. In a tincture form, if you use a tincture at its maximum dose, you're addressing the physical organ of the heart. If you're doing just three drops in a glass of water once a day, you're addressing the emotional heart. And so I enjoy the combination of a flower essence for the heart as well as an herb for the heart. Okay, so you can choose to, you know, get something like that or not. The other thing that I think is very, very crucial is working with a blood purifying tea. Um, initially, when I worked with a blood purifying tea, I was using Jason Winner's tea. And the formula at that time, the FDA was saying, you must change these herbs. We don't want you using chaparral in there anymore and so they had to change their formula and it wasn't quite as strong and it was during well actually several years after that because I was always looking for blood purifying teas one of the primary ones being red clover in there but Asiac tea um, and there's lots of different names that other people use and other companies is to me the my favorite blood purifying tea, even over the original Jason Winner's formula. And the herb bar, I asked Jeffrey, he said they have two um, formulas here. One is called Guardian Spirit, which is just the four original ingredients of the Essiac tea formula. And this is one that they actually added uh, blessed thistle and kelp as the additional ingredients called bodyguard. When doing a bl blood purifying tea, and just to let you know, they actually have a really good um, little handbook. I love little pamphlet books. It's a fast way of learning a lot of different information on Essiac tea and, and why it works and how it works. But with using, looking at this, Okay, I want to make sure they have good directions on here. Okay, good. And because it takes a long time to brew Essiac tea, it really does. And because uh, you have to boil it for so long and then literally steep it for several hours, like overnight, and then bring it to um, almost to a boil and then turn it off. And then once it cools, you strain it so that you've extracted all the properties from it. So I just want I figured Twyla would make sure the right directions were on here, but I like to just check. And with the SEIC tea, what I find to be the most helpful for the body is if you drink it twice a day, morning and night, for two weeks, and then you take a two week break and then you get back on it. And you just keep going through those cycles. If you do this, you will find your personal body doing better. I don't care if you're dealing with a uh, cold or allergies or, you know, you just want to begin the process of losing weight because it'll help the bowels move a little bit by purifying. Not that it has things that are specifically for bowel movement, but because it's cleansing, that's a natural part of it. And, um, you will literally start feeling better. So to me, please um, do it. I probably twice a year will make uh, some Essiac tea and do two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on. <laughs> and sometimes I go longer. 
that I usually go through where I've had three cycles on to actually cleanse the, the body. Now, if you're supporting somebody who's going through a cancer experience, you have to see what they're open to. They may not be open to anything. And so your job is just really to love them in their choices and put them on some prayer lists. At whatever, yes? If you work with somebody that actually has cancer, we used to follow that two week up, two week on, or with the bleeding tea. With the tea? Yes, if you actually do have cancer. Yes, yes. Just keep doing it. And the, the question was if you're helping somebody who's willing to drink the tea, and actually they may drink the tea not even knowing what it is and be okay. And um, yes, continue to have them drink the tea because their body will still need uh, a rest. Because when a body is so toxic, when a system is so toxic, and you're giving it stuff to detox, the body gets excited. It's like, woohoo, we're detoxing. And it starts dumping more and more and more and more. And then before you know it, you've got the system backed up and it can't get the toxins out fast enough. And that's no fun because you can have massive, massive cramping in the colon. And you can have some um, very embarrassing moments as the colon starts dumping at very inappropriate times. Okay. <laughs> I can promise you that from personal experience, okay? And I have the story in there, but I had started um, a natural hygiene program, and um, I was doing so much detoxing and fasting and cleansing, and I was also doing colonics to help get the acceleration of the toxins out of my body, and I started to have so much pain. I was actually going to, um, it was a day I was going in to get a colonic. And I never made it there because the pain and the cramping got so severe that I winded up being taken to emergency because of the severity of it. Because I got about this close into going into liver failure. And so that's why I say, please, no matter what, you work with somebody that knows what they're doing to make sure you don't compromise your body. Because if, if things go into failure, you have no other choice but to take an allopathic route because what they're good for is emergency, you know, repair work type stuff. And <clears throat> all they really did was give me some suppositories and then I went home, my mother and grandfather took me home, and the pain was so severe, I couldn't stop screaming. And my mother sat by the bed and just read to me, to distract me. And for whatever reason, thank God I finally fell asleep. But when I woke up, I, I was so horrified, I was so embarrassed. But I was completely, from here down, saturated in feces. The bed was, and all, and all I could do was like scream out. And so they, they literally had to carry the mattress outside, spray it down, you know, call the restoration people, get me in the shower. The pain was gone, thank God. <laughs> because that matter is so toxic. It hurts. It hurts inside. Yeah. Yes. I, I can kind of relate to what you're saying. I, I told one time like I had a spelling either for my liver or my kidney. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm testing for right now. Yeah, the pain it causes like contractions and yes. uh, intestinal wall. I yeah. Yeah. Ha so you know what it feels like. Yeah. So the thing is, is if you do cleansing on a regular basis, which at that point until I began that, I didn't know you can avoid having that sort of experience as long as you're addressing the emotional mind. Because I have known people that they physically and what they consume and what they do for their body do everything that looks perfect. And they still have a cancer experience to deal with. And they didn't cleanse their mind. 
Now see, part of this too, and this is part of the mind thing, is part of it can do with a karmic situation from a previous embodiment. But that's too big a subject to address in this talk. But still, that is from the emotional mind. So if you're addressing the emotional mind too, the success of what you do health-wise on the food you eat or what you can, you know, drink, whether you're doing, you know, fasting or cleansing, like there's been this massive craze and, and I know a number of people that have been leaders in it personally because I'm real active in the raw food community too that have everybody drinking these green drinks, you know, throwing your spinach and kale and to me is like sludge. You know, I love juice, but I don't necessarily want to make it a sludge drinking down. But the thing that they're that's happening is people aren't getting enough education that are doing this and they're having some real radical detox effects and what happens is a lot of people quit. They're like, this is crap as craps, you know, mm, coming out. And they got stuff coming out this way too. And they quit. And that actually will exacerbate the situation and make the situation worse. So you have to understand. Yes. What is it with that raw energy drink, the raw vegetable drink? Well, it's great. I mean, raw juice is fabulous for your body. But you, what I was doing when I had that massive evacuation is... I was consuming massive quantities of raw juice every day. I was even going in for colonics three to four times a week to keep that evacuation going. But because the body was detoxing, you know, negative, malignant, dirty stuff. Remember I said the body gets excited when you do detox. It really does. That it started going, here you go. So if you're not in a life-threatening situation, just do your regular maintenance. Go slow. So you don't have that. You know, with what you were doing, I don't know if you were following things as regimented as I was. Cause I was on, I'm sorry. That's okay. I was on the buzz recovery. Okay. Time, and that's when all, uh, it, you know, whatever happened, I guess I, I had passed the tumor. Okay. And that's where my problem came. But I kept using the buzz recovery. So I was trying to get it out of my, tip, my, my trying to get it out of my system, and then I started using Zolite. Have you, have you yes, I have. So the, really excited, yeah, so here's the thing is, if you're not being monitored in your detox, no matter what you're using, if you don't know to have like some downtime and let things catch up a little bit, you're going to have a problem. What, what do you mean by downtime to let them catch up? Just stop some accelerated detoxing with your system for a period of time. You can still eat good, but just relax in the daily regimen. I had a daily regimen that I was following to the letter no matter what. And it was cleansing my system. And in, in truth at that time I needed it at that pace but most people because at the time I was originally diagnosed I was in fourth stage. That's why they gave me less than six months. But most people even if they're in first or second stage, or they've not had any other diagnosis other than, oh, you have restless leg syndrome, or you have anxiety, or you have diabetes, or you have heart condition, you know, or whatever, it's not serious enough that you have to take that aggressive of an action. And to find that balance of detox while building your body up and giving your cells what they require to produce what they do naturally. Because if we do everything we're supposed to and have this pristine mind, this is a self-cleaning system. <laughs> but 
somehow that switch of being self-cleaning totally, you know, that wire got clipped. I was surprised when I started detoxing too. All the what is, you know, accumulation of body before you, you know, it's, just, it's interesting. Well, it is because... When you're detoxing, you're like, oh, man, there cannot be any more coming out of me. Really? You know, you think that no matter, and I, I've always been pretty lean. I'll get some belly fat once in a while, but I've always been pretty lean. And I'm like, I'm not that big. How can all this come out of me? You know, but it, it does, and it's okay. Don't pass any sort of judgment on it. It's okay to be curious about it, be fascinated by it. And I remember that at one point when things were just, I, I was about to go in to uh, Stanford for the bone marrow transplant, and I remember my father, uh, there were a few moments of wisdom that came out of his mouth, and this was one moment, thank God, and he said, think of this as an adventure. Because there were so many moments that I was caught up in the emotional of pain of why is this happening to me? But once again, I had to return to taking ownership and responsibility for what was contaminating my mind. Because thoughts move through. But you don't have to latch on to them and feed them, you know, because if you go into the doctor and they say, okay, you've got cancer and, and you're going to die, you know, you've only got maybe 25% chance of living. You can grasp on to you're going to die, just settle your affairs or not. And with some people that is truly the case and it's okay once again. I know I've done a lot of talking here. <laughs> so, yes. So actually, if a person did do that green drink, I mean, just moderate, maybe take it once a day over a period of time, that's not going to cause any... I mean, it's just keep you Oh, clear. no. Doing... That would keep you clear. I'm yeah, I mean, no. you got to do more than a green drink. You've got to understand oh, yeah. how the body yeah. works. I mean, green drinks are great. Raw juices are great. I personally don't want to whirl it up in a blender and have the sludge. I, I guess I'm a juice snob. I want the pulp out of there. I just want the juice, you know. And there are so many things you've got to understand. The digestive system, the liver, the kidneys. You've got to understand the part that minerals play in healing. This is a way bigger subject than I can give you all the information in an hour. That's why I say, let's keep the bloodstream clean. Let's work on the emotional heart. Let's start there. And then I can take you further if you want to go further. But you have to start at step one. Most people, they want to get to the outcome first. They want to go to step 10 first without doing the preliminary stuff. And it's just like, you know, if you get behind the wheel of a car, but you know nothing about driving it, do you think you're going to be able to drive it? Kind of, sort of. But you all were doing the detox, excessive, doing when you had these problems, right? Detox. I know my mom had a big garter. Uh-huh. And my aunt had her to get her a juicer. I mean, yeah. I'm not, that right. kind of stuff right. is good if you have it every day. I'm not Yeah, juice every day is great. But your problems came from the excess of the detox and not being guided. No, I had guidance. I was working with a health professional, a natural health professional along with doctors. But the toxicity of my body, with the extent of the detox, my body responded so rapidly to get rid of it that it's, it still was too fast. I still had that going on. That's what I meant. You know, it was okay. it wasn't just a normal thing. It was normally happening, but the excess, the ex and probably the brain to function along with it. 
scaring you to death. Right. right? It, it, and it's not the brain, it, it's the thoughts. Right. It's more of the emotions. Right. Right. Exactly. So understanding things in stages because you don't have to wait till you have a massive red flag screaming at you right. to go through what I went through. You can begin to take action right now to take care of the different things that you need to take care of. You know, to me, even doing the SEACT is very gentle compared to doing massive colon cleanses and juicing because I was doing some volcanic ash to to help move it out more. So, if you don't have a life-threatening situation, take it slow, still be monitored, and do the regular maintenance. If you're there to support somebody else in whatever they're going through, it's okay to make the suggestion, hey, have you thought about being open to just maybe drinking some tea? If it makes it easier for them to go through chemo because they don't have the buildup of the chemo waste in their body by drinking the tea and that's all they're gonna do, that's an improvement. And if they're not gonna do that even, still being a support for them in their choices. And so you have to remember in how you're helping them. Are you helping them because you're in fear and you want them to do something a certain way because you're in fear and you don't want them to leave planet Earth? Then you're not serving them. You're addressing your ego. It's such a fine line. In every single moment we get to look at our intentions. So that's what I'm saying here is 100% be a support. It's okay to gently bring in some information now and again. If they accept it, great. If they don't, great. Initially, that can be very challenging because there is, I've seen a lot of family members die that didn't have to. And I reached a point where I was just like, I'm here, you know I'm a wealth of knowledge and I'm happy to help at whatever level. And they didn't want that help. And that's okay. I had to learn that that was okay. May I ask you a question? Yes. yes. On the ECF, some people suggest that when you're gonna drink it, you warm up like half warm water. Oh, with the SEAC? Yeah, because once you make the tea, and um, you can find a lot of information on this, but once you make the tea and you have it stored in the fridge, you pour out one to two ounces, and then you add a couple ounces of warm or hot water to it. So, yeah, that's how it is with the Essiac. Yeah, and I do love the Essiac. And there's, you know, Whole Foods, they carry one that's called Renee Cassie. They also have the Flora Essence. And I will tell you, with every single person, even though there's emotional issues in dealing with cancer, on the physical level to repair them, because it's not just about detoxing, you've got to repair them, what their nutritional needs will be different per every single person. There can be some basic or core things, but there's also going to be some individual things that are very individual. And you can find a, tons of information, tons of books on all kinds, you know, on different herbs that help with cancer. I mean, I've got, um, I actually brought some books and I'm just going to be giving them to y'all. And I don't know if I have enough. So if people came as a couple, <laughs> you know, it, because uh, I have seven books here, so y'all are one, right? Your husband and wife team, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoever doesn't get a book, they can come by my office and get one. And, <clears throat> okay, great. And, um, 
Yes. When you get there. I have a friend that has a big cancer. Uh huh. Okay, she is on heal chemo. Okay. She's sick a lot of times. Yeah, chemo will make you sick. Right. Um, but the doctor she's under, I guess, maybe had it too strong and she was just unusually sick. But now they reduced the dosage and she's doing some better. It's putting her or telling her about the tea or something to build her body back. I think it's tearing her body over. Well, it is. The thing is, the older a person gets when they're doing chemo, the more challenging it is for them to get through. I, I remember a client of mine in her 70s who called me and said, oh, the doctors tell me I have this, so I'm going to go do chemo. And I, I begged her. I said, please, you, you are not physically strong enough. You cannot go through those cycles. And she did. She went through them, and then she could not complete them. She went through two cycles. <coughs> And partway through the third one, she had to stop. Her body was too weak. It was killing her. So you have to look at that. Because, see, the cancer is toxic. The chemo is toxic. And with chemo, it does not just target cancer cells. It really, like, psh, saturates every cell with the toxicity. So it... You know, she needs more than the SEAC T, but if the SEAC T will keep her blood a little bit cleaner, so that toxicity level from the chemo can stay down, it'll make it a bit easier. And there are different, um, there's a book called Cancer Choices that interviews a number of physicians around the country and uh, the oncologist who actually wrote the foreword in my book, who was my oncologist, he was one of the doctors interviewed in that. And it, it lists different physicians that use different chemo dosages that they find is more effective in combining uh, nutritional injections, like vitamin high dosage, vitamin injections as well. So they're truly are many, many choices because there's a number of what's called like an alternative cancer treatment centers opening up around the country that aren't based on just natural medicine. Like there's um, Hippocrates and, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the one we have right outside of Austin here. We've had for years. I toured the facility. But there's a number that are just natural, and then there are others that combine the natural with the chemo, and they use different types of chemo and lower dosages of chemo. So I would say, please have your friend, you know. Here's the thing. Let me back up. You have a choice to change doctors if you don't like the doctor that you're working with. And that's where a lot of people give away their power. You know, when I went into the doctor, if the doctor kept me waiting too long, and it was this oncologist who wrote the foreword in my book, I would go in to see Dr. Forsythe, and sometimes he'd have me wait for an hour or two before I'd get into his office. So one day, I didn't show up for an hour past the time of my appointment. And the nurse goes, you're late. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I said, I always sit out here and wait for an hour or two. If you want me here at a certain time, you get me in the room. Because the primary thing to know is the doctor is working for you. You are paying their bill. And I did learn when I went in for the bone marrow transplant, and I tell people this, the doctors at Stanford University, they told me when I went in there to bring a tape recorder and tape record everything. And I tell people, when you go into the doctor, tape record everything. I promise you the doctor will be very selective on what they say. They won't throw in the fear factor. Yes. If you're uncertain about, I mean, 
how did you know what part of the body your cancer was? Did you just go in and test? Or oh, know? yeah. It, 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 I went through massive testing yeah. initially, and there was probably four months of testing. They did everything, every kind of test you can possibly imagine. And because what I was given was four stage, which, which means really radical, poorly differentiated small cell lymphoma. So that means tumors throughout the entire lymph system, which the entire lymph system moves with throughout the entire body. You know, according to medicine, the probability of me being alive is about that big. And I think it's only because of my job here on the planet was to help people at the capacity that I help people. And I'm one of these people that I love really knowing the core of things and that interconnectedness. It's not just about my fingernail and that's all that exists. How do the dots connect? To me, that's fascinating. And when I see people come in and they learn how to connect those dots, because I want people to understand this, to get it, to begin to know how to read it within themselves. Because we're not supposed to walk around ignorant. Remember, if this is a self-cleaning oven, we gotta know what's going on with our system. Yes, yes. Else a um, do you know of any doctors that treat cancer that do it natural way instead of using chemo and radiation? There are a number of people that do. And you're welcome to call me later and I can talk to you further about it. Okay. All right, yeah. I know we need to start to bring this to a close, and so does anybody have any last questions? Because I, I can keep talking. I have a passion for this and helping people, and I'm like, okay, how do I take this massive, massive, massive subject and like sh shrink it down to an hour, <laughs> you know? And um, so does anybody have a last question? Allopathic is what's considered mainstream medicine, like doctor, physician. That's what they consider allopathic medicine. If you'll take a card and pass it around that way, if anybody wants to go to my website, they can do that. I have a number of articles. Um, you can, yes? Does the ND stand for? Naturopathic doctor. Yeah, and like I said, I mostly work with herbs and energy medicine. The one thing that I always do, I'm very connected to the angelic realm. I have worked with my angels and other people's angels for years and years and years. So all of my guidance and direction when people come in is angelically guided because they also are giving me you know, information. There's a lot of natural paths out there that really take a very clinical approach that want to wear the white coat and, you know, uh, that'll do hair and urine analysis or live blood cell analysis. And the thing that was established for me when I went through the cancer experience was that of being a medical intuitive. I got so good at scanning the body that initially when I began to see things in other people, I didn't realize, I go, oh my God, and I turned to whoever was with me, do you see what's going on with their blah, 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 you know, and they'd go like, no, and I go, uh. yeah, yeah, so, um, anyhow, so we'll bring this to a close, like I said, y'all have my cards, are they being passed, where are they at? Did we run out? Oh, no, good, we have plenty. Um, like I said, the herb bar carries the Essiac tea in there. Let me go ahead and give you a book here. Thank you. This tells my story and everything I did. 
in the back there's a massive resource of books um, on color therapy um, there's a tremendous amount of things to help you understand the emotional mind as well you're so welcome you're so welcome like I said um, you said you guys can share okay um, who wants to take it if if you will call my office and come by I'll be happy to give you a copy <laughs> y'all can yes yes thank you very very much oh very good I really appreciate you coming and I really appreciate your patience with me tackling a massive subject in such a short period of time but please if anything you take away know that you have choices positive choices no matter what path that you take blessings to each of you Thank you very much.